Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to be showing you this gallery template I've made for my patrons this month. So this will be useful, for example, if you wanted to make a photo gallery. That's the most simplest way you can, each on each page you can have your own photo or your own drawings and make it into a slideshow. So you could obviously have words on this and have, make it into a, some kind of presentation or something. Um, you could also make it into a, like a comic book where you can split it up into panels and you can um, obviously display artwork and text to make a story or you can just have text and it be it almost like a book or you can you know mixture of the of everything and just make some an interactive story right um, and obviously the fact that we're only using free buttons that means you have the whole directional pad left free to um, do whatever you like so we could also have multiple choices here that send us to a different um, part of the book to make a choose your own adventure style story I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. So there are three buttons that make you either go to the next page, back a page, or return to this screen. Um, and as you can see, as we move through by pressing A, the page numbers at the very bottom go up. So obviously if you can go all the way through, there's 10 pages right now, but you can have um, up to 999 with this uh, current version that I'm making. Um, and so when we press start, we also go back to the gallery start screen. So these files are available to my patrons right now. They can obviously go into this project and have a look, but I'm going to explain how it works to you as quickly and as simply as I can. So to begin, let's look at the start screen here. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, a touch script to start button. We don't really need this on the main screen because it sends us back to this. So we just have, when we press start, it sends us to this scene. You may also notice that we have a hide player event here. So that means that when we come into these scenes, as you can see on every single one of them, we have a hide player event. It means that we can't see the uh, the actor that the player is. So all they are are just looking at the screen and there's nothing in the way basically. And so when we press A, we go to page one. And when we press B, we go all the way back to page 10. Um, it's very simple. That's, that's just how each page technically is set up. But I will go into more detail about the page numbers at the bottom here. So obviously when we go on to page one, it sets, we have to make sure that each page we are setting to display the correct page number here. Um, and that's just so it will display at the very bottom here. Okay, so at the risk of losing some viewers here, I'm going to explain how I make the page numbers um, update when we, when we start the scene. As you can see, all these scenes are using the same background image and it's just got this one, two, three down here. And the reason why is you want these tiles to be specifically unique. Obviously any tiles can be um, whatever they want else in the scene, but these three down here needs to be unique from any other tile in the scene. So that when we update the, the background tiles, we can set them to these numbers here and they'll display as page numbers. The reason why we wanna do that is because if you make your own artwork and put them onto a scene like this, and you want page numbers, obviously you don't want page numbers, you can delete this whole thing here, but page numbers are good for the, the reader or the viewer to keep their place. So by keeping these unique, you as the creator of this can have as many different images as you want, and you can put them in any order you want, and you don't have to like put the, ve the, the page values on your own artwork. They can be set by the engine. And it hopefully would mean that when you move around stuff, all you need to do is change this page value here on whichever scene you're referring to, and you can keep your uh, pages in sequence. And it may not sound like a big thing, but hopefully this will be like your introduction to setting background tiles. And so you can start using it in your own games. We actually have to extrapolate this page number into displaying the units value, the tens value, and your hundreds value. And that's just by doing simple maths here where we just modulus 10 on the first one. So anything uh, at 10 or above in the value. So let's imagine the, um, the number is 123. If we were to modulus it by 10, you'd be left with three because anything 10 or higher gets just forgotten by the thing. So we're now um, hopefully left with the free value. And on the 10, it's a very similar thing, but we have to divide it by 10 um, first to um, basically move this value down to here. And then by modulusing the 10, we're getting rid of anything above it. And, and then for the 100, we just divide it by 100. Uh, that's probably the most simplest one. 
Um, the problem is if you ha would have more than 999 pages, it may then display incorrectly. So you have to keep that in mind on out of thousands if you are going to have thousands of pages in your game. And then the final thing, which is arguably the most important, we have VM replace tile. And as you can see, this is 1817, 1717, and 1617. And if you look just under my head at the very bottom left of the screen, when I drag my cursor across these numbers, you can see at the very bottom left that the X and Y values um, are updating. Um, so obviously it's just X is changing as I can move um, horizontally. So that's um, the units value is 1817, tens is 1717, and then the hundreds is 1617. And that's how I've set up here. And by using P1, P10, and P100 um, after the var thing, then we're setting the background tile to t t bank tile set zero, tile set zero. And that just means the first thing to build in this project, because of this exclamation mark on the um, background, um, if you didn't know, in alphabetical order, syntax comes first, and then um, numbers, and then letters. So by having an an exclamation mark, we are making sure that this scene is built first. So when we're referring to um, tiles, tile set zero, tile set zero here in the bank, then we're, we're literally referring to this. So um, how we've set up the numbers, so when it displays as three, if we count starting from zero, zero, one, two, three, then we got three to display first. So that means you can imagine um, if the value goes beyond this 10 here, this is 0 to 9, if it goes to 10, then it will display as blank. Hopefully this is a, uh, an okay introduction to this stuff. Obviously I'm, I'm using it more advanced in my um, Battleship tutorial, but I feel like that is too advanced for some people. And this is good to come back to just displaying simple values like this, where we have one value, and then it's extrapolated into three different variables, and then those variables update three singular tiles. Uh, and by having this, that same stuff on the scene every time, it should be pretty easy to wrap your head around, I hope. But yeah, I hope this has helped you think about using the replace tile uh, script in the GBVM um, events. And also help, hopefully uh, made you realize how easy it can be to set up um, something like a gallery or a comic or a book in GB Studio. If we jump over to GIMP here, you can see I've, uh, this is how I created the um, gallery. As you see, it's just pixel art. I've got the tiles. If we go into um, configure grid, I've set the foreground color to red, and then I've got the uh, spacing of the, um, the grid as eight by eight pixels. Uh, and so it displays like this and we can easily zoom in and get um, artwork. And obviously when we're referring to the tiles, when we're replacing the tiles in the script, we are literally re re like referring to these tiles that we can see when we turn on this grid here. Uh, and obviously the pages are just like this. And obviously when we export an image and put it into the files, um, you don't wanna be overwriting something you've already done unless obviously you're updating something. But um, obviously if you were to do a drawing, you can um, you can easily export it into uh, GB Studio, and then you can open it up in GB Studio just by changing this thing. And because we've made it so um, the page numbers automatically update, we don't have to remember which page it needs to be on until we're inside the engine. Oh, and I also want to touch upon this, this is what the tile set um, bank thing is looking like, where we got 0, 2, 9. Very simple. So yeah, I really hope this was useful. And if you are thinking of making some kind of gallery structure or something, if you are my patron, you can download it right now. This was inspired by one of my patrons, so I thank them very much. I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you very much to all of you. Remember to like the video if you liked the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video and how you would want me to maybe expand on this gallery structure in the future. And I'll see you in the next video.